The Geely E5 electric SUV has just been seen in Australia. Geely, well, a little bit of confusion here because Geely is the parent company of the brand called Geely Galaxy. The Geely Galaxy is going to be the brand of this EV here called the E5. Now, I just saw, guys, some information revealed on the new Geely Galaxy E5. Starting price in China for this vehicle, which is significantly bigger than a BYD Auto 3. It's closer in size, in fact, to a Tesla Model Y than a BYD Auto 3. Starting price is $15,000. Now, this, <laughs> this electric car has some of the best technology that I've seen in any EV. And to be honest, yeah, we have some good EVs here on sale that you can buy in Australia, but even some of these EVs that you can buy in Australia, they're much more expensive than this car. The technology is nowhere near as good. If you don't live in Australia, it doesn't matter because the Geely, well, the Galaxy E5, they'll be on sale in numerous different countries around the world. Now, remember, Geely have a big advantage here over manufacturers like BYD, like NEO, like Xpeng. They already have an existing dealership network, which is Volvo, Polestar, Volvo. Now, Volvo dealers, um, apparently there was initially a bit of resistance, I've, I heard, but Volvo dealerships are now like, well, you know what, if you want to sell Zikas here, we'll sell Zikas at, at Volvo dealerships, we'll sell Polestar, we'll sell multiple brands. So that's the advantage here. You know, when you're going to go and buy a Galaxy E5 or a Galaxy EV, you, you won't have to wait for this whole dealership network to exist and say to yourself, well, are they, are they going to be around in a few years? Will there still be a warranty? Will it be like Fisker and I'll be screwed? Because essentially you'll be able to buy these vehicles from existing dealer networks. And I think that's why these vehicles are so relevant to us. What else is relevant? Well, these prices are insane. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. New EVs that you can check out right now will be at the new the Melbourne EV show. If you haven't already seen this in my videos, I'm saying it in every video because I'd love to see you there. It'll be on this Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I'll be there Friday night, Saturday and Sunday at the show this weekend in Melbourne. And the, the tickets, you can get them in the link in the description below. You'll get a discount if you click on my link. The Australian market already has a bunch of Chinese electric cars. I believe guys here in Australia that Japanese, European and American manufacturers are in enormous trouble, enormous. And I mean, beyond anyone's wildest imaginations, I believe that within 10 years, uh, Toyota, Ford, Honda, Nissan, they will be a shell of themselves here in Australia. Their sales will fall by more than 60% over the next 10 years. And cars like these are the exact reason why. Now, considering the price of this car in China is 24,000 Australian dollars, and it's big. I mean, it's 4.6 meters long and 1.9 meters wide. So it's in between a model, an Auto BYD Auto 3 and a Model Y in terms of its size. And it's impressive. Now, here's the, here's the thing. This vehicle comes with, in its base form, a 160 kilowatt, 320 newton meter electric motor. That's about 220 horsepower. It does zero to 100 in 6.9 seconds, the same time as a Tesla Model Y. The smallest battery pack, the cheap version of this car, right? That costs 15,000 US dollars. It's a 49.5 kilowatt hour battery. You can also get a 60.2 kilowatt hour LFP battery. Range is 440 kilometers for the smallest battery pack or 530 kilometers for the bigger battery pack. That's CLTC range. So deduct about 10 to 15%. So realistically, you're probably looking at about 370 kilometers of range WLTP for the 15,000 US dollar version. And you're looking at about 460 kilometers for the longer range, bigger battery version. Now, interestingly, Car Expert, they had an article on their website, but they missed the biggest thing that this car has. Uh, the absolute game-changing technology this vehicle has. I don't think they're even aware of it. I mean, obviously these guys are not passionate about EVs, I understand that, but it was a bit of a shock to me. I read the whole article and I thought, are you guys insane? This vehicle is using the best battery technology in the world. You didn't even mention that. I mean, <laughs> imagine if um, 
a, a brand new car vehicle came out from any manufacturer. Like imagine if Ford just brought out this brand new car and it was the best engine in the world and it was one of the cheapest cars in the world. People would be like, hang on a minute, you put a Porsche engine, you put a, a, a Porsche GT3 RS engine in a Ford and you're selling that Ford for 20 grand? What, really? That's insane. How can like car expert not realize that this is utterly mental? That analogy I just gave you is exactly accurate. It's exactly accurate because they're using the new they're using the new golden battery. This new Aegis short blade battery. It charges at 560 kilowatt charging speeds in the freaking real world. This is not theoretical. This is actually real. Not only are these batteries incredibly energy dense, the most energy dense LFP battery you can currently get in the world that's affordable anyway. You can get super exotic ones that are not affordable that no one really uses, but it's also the fastest charging battery and it also has the best thermal management in terms of, um, when I say thermal management, what I actually mean is the best protection from thermal runaway. So they've gone to like extreme lengths to make sure these batteries cannot be set on fire. They've done all this testing, you know, the BOD nail test, they've done that, they've driven over these things, they've tried to put them in massive fires, they don't, these things are basically, you drive one of these cars, you, you're in a crash, the battery is gonna be fine. Uh, that'll mean though, if you're, you know, you can probably buy these car vehicles after they've been crashed, repurpose the batteries. A lot of people are doing that in now current EVs, but that's gonna be one of the great things of the future, right? We have the repurpose, repurpose battery packs for energy storage for our homes. People, like I said, are already doing that all over Australia, all over America, all over Europe, they're doing that right now. And I think people are aware that's happening. But anyway, the Aegis short blade battery. Why does it charge so fast? Why does it charge so much faster than a BYD battery pack? Well, first of all, I should point out, I don't know if this new E5 can charge at those speeds. I just know that these batteries are capable of that charging speed. There are EVs made under the Geely umbrella by Zika that use um, those exact batteries and can charge at those speeds. But this new car may not charge at that speed. We don't know yet. We just know the batteries are capable of that. Now, one of the reasons that these batteries can charge so quickly is because they are a short blade. Essentially, Geely uh, tested standard blade batteries, which are a certain length, and they realized that if they halved the battery length, the battery packs would actually charge much, much faster. So it seems like a pretty simple solution to me. BYD's solution was not to do that. BYD's solution was to essentially double the battery pack. So you charge, you basically split the battery pack into two. But the, I, that said, BYD's new cars, like the brand new BYD Seal, does charge faster than the previous version. Charging speed has increased significantly for the new BYD Seal, which will be out, I believe, in a few months' time. Getting back to the Geely Galaxy E5. It has apparently power adjustable, heated, ventilated, and massaging front seats, a 15, 15 inch infotainment touchscreen, a 10 inch digital instrument cluster, a heads up display, power tailgate, 16 speaker sound system. I'm gonna guess you probably don't get all that stuff for 15,000 US dollars in China, but you never know, maybe you do. Apparently it has 33 separate storage spaces, including sliding drawers under the rear seat. Now, if I had 33 separate storage spaces in my car, I'd never find anything. I'd be like, uh, which storage space was that in number 27? No, then it's in number no, it's in number 18. My brain can't remember stuff like that. But anyway, 33 storage spaces, that's impressive. Safety technology includes intelligent cruise assist, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, and traffic sign recognition. This is a global car, by the way. I should point that out in case I didn't already. I should also point out if you're confused, the Galaxy brand was only established, I believe, last year. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? Because Geely now have so many brands. I mean, they obviously have companies like Zika, they have Volvo, Polestar, uh, Lotus, uh, there's Lincoln Co. There's also another brand that you probably haven't heard of, well, maybe you had of, uh, Radara. Now, Radara will be the new electric pickup truck, which is called the Radar. So the Radar brand is a separate brand. The electric pickup truck, I believe, is coming to many different countries worldwide next year. That might be the first electric pickup truck you can buy in Australia. Now, of course, they also have the Geometry brand. I think I already mentioned Lincoln Co. And all these brands are meant to contest against each other. That's the, the plan of the parent company is they're not protecting the brands, that the brands are, even though they're under the same umbrella, they actually need to fight against each other to stay alive. So prices for these cars should be very, very, very competitive. 
Now, getting back to the prices, there are there are a few different versions of this car. The base model, like I said, it's fifteen thousand seven hundred US dollars for the base model, but then there's another model above that which costs about two thousand dollars more. There's another model of that that costs about another six thousand dollars more. The long range version of this vehicle is one hundred and thirty nine thousand RMB, so it's about twenty thousand US dollars for the long range version of this vehicle. Now, I don't know what the price will be outside of China but it probably will be incredibly good. This is kind of being positioned, this car, as more of a, I wouldn't call it budget, but a cheaper Geely vehicle brand. So yeah, as Tony Sieber said, EVs are going to come down in price. I don't know if they're going to come down as much as what Sieber's saying, but I mean, new vehicles like this, they will push the price of, of EVs down even more, more competition, plus, Battery pack prices have just come down over the last month by around between three to nine percent, but this year so far by an about additional fifteen percent as lithium carbonate prices continue to fall. But plus, the energy density of these battery packs is increasing, so less lithium is needed to provide the same amount of power. The electric car industry, guys, it's at a pivot point. It's at that point that that S curve, you know, with the slow part of the S curve. And that's where we're at kind of right now. Things are about to go absolutely crazy. And I'm I'm here sitting in the stands eating my popcorn and I'm looking on and honestly, stuff is about, I mean, shiz is about to hit the fan. Things are about to go big time. EVs are about to go ballistic. And I think people don't realize that. The media are conning us. They're tricking you into thinking, it. no, no, EVs are not enough demand. Slow down, slow down. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see about that.